Hello and welcome back. In the last session, we looked at some essential commands for managing your containers. And then we also looked at some essential inspection tools that can help us to inspect our containers. In today's session, we are going to talk about Docker images. So far, we have run containers, but we have been using prepackaged components called images. Today, we are going to understand what these images are, where they come from, and how to manage them on our own systems. Now, before we dive into the details, if you found this content helpful, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow and allows me to keep making more videos just like this one. Let's get started with this. Let's start with the fundamental question. What exactly is a Docker image? Think of your Docker image as a blueprint or a template or a snapshot. It's a read-only file that contains all the necessary components to run a piece of software. This includes the source code, the runtime environment like Python or Node.js, and also the system libraries and system tools. So basically, everything that is needed to run our application will be available within this Docker image. Now, two of the most critical components to grasp about images are layers and read-only file system. Let's talk about each of them. So first, we will talk about uh, layers. Now, an image is not one big monolithic file. It's built as a series of read-only layers. And each of these layers represents a set of file system changes. Let's take a hypothetical example of building a Python application image. So layer one would be your base image, like let's say Ubuntu 20.04. So this will be the minimal Ubuntu operating system. Then layer two will be a command like run apt, get update and apt install Python 3. So this layer adds the Python interpreter on top of your Ubuntu base layer. On top of this, you will have a command like copy. So this will be your layer three. This layer adds your application source code into the app directory. And then you will have your CMD instruction. So this will be your layer four. This layer sets the default command to run. Now each of these instructions in a Docker file creates a new immutable layer. So basically every instruction that you have in a Docker file comprises of a layer. So in this case, I have four instructions. That means I have four layers in my Docker image. Now, why is this so powerful? Because it is efficient and reusable. If you have 10 different images all based on Ubuntu, your system only stores one copy of that base layer and they all share this base layer. Then it provides you with caching. So when you rebuild an image, Docker only rebuilds the layers that have changed. If your source code, let's say the layer three changes, but your base OS and install packages haven't, Docker can use the cached versions of layer one and two, making builds incredibly fast. And then last is your smaller transfers. So when you pull an image, Docker downloads each layer individually. If you already have some layers, it only downloads the new ones. The next thing we have is your read-only file system. So since all these layers are read-only, you cannot modify an image once it's built. When you run a container from an image, Docker creates a new thin writable container layer on top of these read-only layers. So this writable layer is often called the container layer. All the changes you make while the container is running, like creating temporary files, writing logs, or modifying the state of an application, all this happens in the writable layer, which is basically your container. The key takeaway here is the image is static and read-only. The running container adds a temporary writable layer on top of your image. So far, we have been running our containers using images. Like in this case, if you see here, I already have uh, some images here and then I also have a, a container running here. But where do we get these images from? We get them from a registry. Think of your registry like an app store for Docker images. And the most popular public registry is Docker Hub. So here, this is your Docker Hub. So Docker Hub is a cloud-based repository where individuals and organizations can store and share their Docker images. Now, under this Docker Hub, you will find different, different images. You have the official images, 
These are vetted, secure and well-documented images provided by the project owners or Docker itself. They have simple names like Nginx, Python, Ubuntu, MySQL. You can rely on these for your production use. For example, here let's say if I search for Nginx image, here you can see official uh, build of Nginx. So basically this is trustable and I can use this in my production environment. Then you have verified publisher images. Now these are from trusted companies like MongoDB, Redis Labs, etc. Their names are usually prefixed by organization. Like let's say for example, uh, we have um, this one for example, Bitnami slash Nginx. So this is your verified publisher images. And then you have your community images. Now these are public images built by anyone in the community. Uh, be cautious with these as they might not be secure or well maintained. Their names are prefixed with the user's docker id like some user slash cool hyphen app something like that. Uh, let's say for example if I see yeah I may have to go through this but I hope you get the idea. Now docker hub is one registry other than this there are some other popular registries that you can use. You have the Google Container Registry, GCR. Uh, on AWS, you have Elastic Container Registry. You also have GitHub Container Registry that you can use to store your container images. Now, you can also run your own private registry for your company's internal images. By default, when you run Docker Pool, it looks for the images on Docker Hub. Let's talk about the Docker Pool command. Now, before you run a container, you need the image on your local machine. The command to download an image from a registry is docker pull. The basic syntax is docker pull, image name and then your tag. Let's break this down. So this image name, this is the name of the image like Ubuntu, Nginx or Python. So let's say for example, I need an uh, image of um, Alpine for example. So here we will search for name of the image. And here you can see that's the official image and uh, the command for this would be docker pull alpine so that's the name of the image that i want and then you have the tag now this specifies a version of the image now, if you don't specify a tag docker defaults to latest so here it will default to this latest so if i don't specify anything it will always get the latest one for us so let's see alpine we'll go to alpine and um, here you can see these are the different different tags you have by default is latest but if you want something else like let's say you want this 3.22.1 then you can specify that over here if not by default it will point to your latest tag now let's see some examples. So let's say I want to uh, pull an Ubuntu um, image. So I'll simply run this docker pull Ubuntu. And this one by default will pull. So you can see here using default tag latest. So it will uh, uh, always use the latest as your default tag. And it has downloaded the image for me. So let's see docker images. And here you can see there is my Ubuntu image. Then let's say if you want a specific version, so you can see all of these are pointing to latest. So I can say docker pull Ubuntu and then the tag. Now you'll have to make sure that this tag is available. If not, then um, uh, Docker will not be able to download that particular image. So in my case, you can see pulling from a library. And now if I look for the image, so here I have that Ubuntu specific version. Likewise, let's say if you want uh, Python, so I can say docker pull uh, Python and this will download that particular image for me. Again, by default, it will use the latest tag. But if you want a, a specific version, then uh, you can specify the tag as well. Like let's say you want the slim version of uh, Python version 3.9, then you can do that. So that's basically how you can use the docker pull command to download your images from docker hub and store them on your local machine. So when you run this docker pull command, you will see that it is downloading the image layer by layer. So here you can see each of this is a layer for us. Now, once you start pulling images, you will need to manage them. 
So let's look at the essential commands. So the first command we have is for list in your images. So you can either use Docker images or Docker image ls. Both commands are valid. So here I can say Docker images or I can also say Docker image ls. Now this command shows you all the images that are currently stored on your local machine. The output will show you the repository, which is the name of your image. It will show you the tag, which is basically the version. It will show you an image ID, which is a unique identifier for that image. It's a truncated hash value. And then when this image was created and what is the total size of the image? Remember, layers are shared. So this is the logical size. Next, how do you remove an image? So for that, we can use this Docker RMI or Docker image RM. So to delete an image that you no longer need, you can use this command. So let's say I want to delete this particular image. So I can say Docker RMI and then um, Ubuntu. And then you'll also need to specify the tag. If you don't specify the tag, again, by default, it will take the latest one. So this will delete the image from my local machine. You can also use the image ID. So let's say I want to delete this particular image. So I can say uh, Docker image RM. So this is another command you have. So you can either use Docker, Docker RMI and then the image ID or you can use Docker image RM and the image ID or the image name. Now, very important thing to remember is you cannot remove an image that is being used by a container. For example, here if you see, I have a container running which is using my Nginx image. So if I try deleting my Nginx image, this will not work. So you can see it is not working because I have a container which is using that image. Now, even if the container is stopped, uh, you will not be able to um, uh, delete the image you will need to remove the dependent container. So basically you need to delete the container itself. Next is cleaning up your unused images. So for that we can use the docker image uh, prune command. So here we can use this command. So um, over time you will accumulate dangling images, basically intermediate layers from builds and unused images. So this prune command is a powerful cleanup tool. So here I can run this command and you can see this will remove all dangling Im images, confirm and uh, if there are any layers then it will give you the space back. Now if you want to remove all of your unused images, not just dangling images, then you can use this docker image prune hyphen A. But be very careful with this uh, uh, command. So yes and uh, this will go ahead and uh, delete all the images that are not being used by any of my containers. So be very careful with this. So this is a great command to run periodically to free up disk space. Now you can run this Docker images command once again. And you see I have only one image which is the Nginx. And I have this because I have a container running from this image. So you should see a much shorter list or perhaps no images at all if you pruned everything. You have now successfully interacted with the public registry, pulled some specific image versions, inspected your local storage and performed the cleanup operations. This is the fundamental workflow for managing Docker images. And that brings us to the end of this session. In the next session, we will talk about Dockerfile and how to build custom images using Dockerfile. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more content and let me know in the comment section if you have any queries. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next session.